Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I've been busy over the past couple of weeks working on a new project. A few years back, I designed these 3D printed paddles from Morse code, and they were designed to be able to be strapped onto your wrist or your leg uh, to make them unique. The idea being you could have them on your wrist when you're operating and be able to use both of your hands to do other things like work the radio, take notes, and then uh, when you needed to send, you just bring your arm over and send off of the paddles. And it was kind of successful, um, but I was never really happy with them. I designed them in Tinkercad, and as such they were kind of blocky, and uh, they had a really wide gap and, and a lot of travel. Uh, I was never really happy with them totally, and I always intended to redesign them. Well, I now have version 2, and uh, I think they're much, much nicer. So let's have a look at my uh, 3D printed panels version 2. Here's the case. You can store them in. They fit right in there real nice. That'll protect them and keep them safe. And here they are. Neat, huh? They've got a really great action. Nice and sensitive. Short travel. Good paddle size for finger interface. And of course, embedded magnets. And the embedded magnets are for the different bases. Here is a base for mounting on a wood block or weighted desk base. And the paddles just click on with the magnets. And if you want to go in the field, you can just take them off. And you can take them with you in the field like this and just hold them and use them if you want. Or the strap mount. So the strap mount has under here, uh, you can kind of see it, a uh, 12 position hex interface. So it has 12 positions it can be mounted to. You take this screw out, you adjust it the way you want it, and then screw it down, and it's mounted. And then of course the paddles just click right in with the magnets, and there they are, and you're ready to operate. So you can use your hands to work the radio, take notes, drink your coffee or whatever, and when it's your turn to transmit, you just bring your wrist in and operate. And they just click right off of the magnets. This time around, I designed it in FreeCAD instead of Tinkercad, which is my new favorite CAD program. It allows me a lot more refinement and much, much, much nicer design. So all the parts were modeled in FreeCAD. Let's look at how you assemble the paddles. So we've printed out the parts. I'm going to talk a little bit about the assembly, some notes and hints. Okay, we'll start with the body, the key body. You're going to put the 16 millimeter M3 screw in through the center. Now I've screwed it all the way down presently, but you're going to want to back that off to put the wire in there. The reason I screwed it in initially, well, we'll find out here in a moment when we put the paddles in. The paddles themselves you're going to put one of the M3 by 3 millimeter flathead screws on there. A couple of little washers. Now, if you have screws that have a um, curved head, you might not need the washers. But what you're going to eventually do is you're going to be using washers to space this out to adjust the contact gap. Now, these have a gap right here in the middle. And that's for the wire to come through. So the wire comes through to the screw. And on this side, there is a cut through the insert for the wire to go through to the inside of the key. So let's insert one of these, and I'll show you what I mean. This is the bottom of the housing. Remember, the cover is going to go on the bottom. So you want the paddle bulge to go this way, towards the flat side. So we'll insert one of these. Now, I designed this with clearances of... Uh, to be slightly sloppy on my printer, which is really accurate. I've got a Prusa that's accurate to uh, 0.07 millimeters. Um, 
and you can see there's just a little bit of slop there. See that? It wiggles around just a little bit. Ultimately, you want that to be firm. So if your printer is as accurate, is accurate, you'll have just a little bit of slop. And what you can do is you can cut a couple of little rectangle or pieces of regular paper and make a shim that you can put in on the flat side. Like so. And that will then cut that slop down. See, I've got just still just a little bit. So I might need two pieces of paper per side. You know, it depends on your printer. If your printer prints this tight, if it's printing it a little bit thick and it's tight, then you'll want to sand that flat side of the paddle down a little bit. But let me uh, put this in on this side. I'll put in two pieces of paper. There, now there's no slop. You can see it's not moving around anymore. So, you know, it'll, it'll depend on your printer. I made it just a little bit loose, and that way some people's printers will print it maybe a little bit tight, and you could just sand this flat side a little bit. You want to get that to where it does not wiggle around like that. You want it to have that, that snugness. So I'll have to cut another couple of shims for mine. Uh, we'll put the other paddle in. Now the other note is this center screw. These screws are almost always slightly bent in one direction. They'll, they'll have a little bend to them. Um, you'll see that when you're rotating the screw and you'll see that the gap will get thicker on, or wider on one side and thinner on the other side. And when you get to the point of putting the wire in there and assembling the whole thing with these paddles properly shimmed or snug, you'll want to slightly rotate that center screw and watch it real close and you'll see that it'll, it'll if it's got a bend to it, it'll change like that and you can watch the gaps. So you can adjust that screw until those gaps are identical on either side. So that's how you'll adjust that. Then once you've got that all figured out and you've got the touch that you want, you can get that gap really small and it'll just be a nice light touch. Um, or if you want to be a little bit stronger, you can make that gap a little bit wider so you have to push just a little harder. So that's how you adjust that. Okay, the uh, back sh side is where you'll put this connector, stereo connector, and the wiring for that is the right hand paddle will go to the ring and the left hand paddle will go to the tip of the connector. And on these connectors, when you look at them from the side, you'll see that it's a sandwich. And you can figure out which tab is for which part of it based on where it sits in the sandwich. So you'll wire that up. Now, the thing you'll want to do is you'll want to wire the ring and tip, put that wire on from here to the paddles before you insert everything. The ground wire will be the last one that you'll hook up, and you'll just sort of bring this over a little bit and put that wire in there to the ground screw and uh, get that locked in, and then you'll be able to slide the paddles in. And when you slide the paddles in, you'll want to guide that wire into this little trench in here so it comes through to the inside of the body. And then before you slide this into its receiver here at the back, that's when you'll go in and you'll, you'll tweak that screw to make sure your gap is equal on both sides. Once you've got it all assembled, you'll take the cover and you'll insert the two 10 millimeter by 2.5 millimeter magnets into their pockets. Now these fit snug on my printer. You might have to press them pretty hard if your printer is printing too thick um, to press them in there, but these should press fit in just fine and you don't have to worry about glue if they fit nice and snug. If they're loose, you'll want to put a drop of super glue into the pocket before you insert the magnets. And you want to make sure that their poles match so that they're both on like the north or the south pole, whichever, they're both on the same side here on the bottom. And then you'll be able to install the cover. There are two centering pads here. The narrow one goes to the back and the wide one here goes to the front. It comes right up to the edge so it's pretty obvious. It won't fit the other way around. Uh, but there's a front and a back to this. And you'll put that on there and you'll then screw in the two uh, M3 by 8 millimeter screws here to hold that cover on. Once you've got that assembled, you can work on your base. Now I have provided files for this. This is a screw-on base that you could mount on a weighted block of wood or metal. And you'll want to insert magnets in here. Now you've got to make sure that these 
poles are opposite of the bottom of the cover so that when you put it on there it snaps together. Don't want to get those magnets backwards especially if you're going to glue them down because they hold pretty well as you can tell I'm <coughs> struggling getting it off there. Now here you might need if the if your magnets don't fit in there really nice and tight you might need to put a drop of super glue in the pocket before you put the magnet in. This is the strap mounted base assembly and I've already assembled it here with a slight angle but there is a uh, hex 12 sided hexagonal pocket and stub in there that gives you um, one, two angular alignments and then a straight on alignment in all directions. You have two uh, intermediate angles you can adjust that to. So you can, I'm going to have it on my wrist and I want that slight angle so the paddles are coming just a little forward so I don't have to reach over here sideways to, to operate them. I can just bring my hand in naturally to operate them when I have it strapped on my wrist. That's why I've angled it that way. But you can, when you put this on, the strap base, you can adjust the angle that you want and then put a screw in the middle and just snug it down to hold it together. That's the strap base. And if you have this if you're gonna strap this on your leg, you'll want to rotate this this way. And maybe at an angle, you know, depending upon your left or right handed and which way you want it. So you can adjust the angle to suit. So that's the strap base. Now the wiring, you're gonna cut three wires, a ground wire and a wire for each paddle. The ground wire, about 55 millimeters, and then the paddle wires, about 65 millimeters long, and strip them slightly at the ends and tin them, and then solder them to the plug first. And then you can, you know, curl the end and put it under the screws on the paddle arms and under the ground screw head here in the main body. So I'm going to assemble the whole thing, and then I'll show it to you assembled. Well, after a little bit of soldering and assembly, there it is, all put together. I did have to tweak that screw in the middle. As I said, sometimes those are bent a little. And uh, I fiddled with it a bit, and I found that you could take some small needle nose pliers and just grab it and just put a little bit of a torque on it to bend it just slightly to really dial that in for the gap so that they're the same. And I've got the radio on. Perhaps you can hear it there. And I'm plugged into it. So let's see if they work. They work. Haha. <laughs> take that out of CW mode so I don't accidentally key it again. So yeah, they work fine. I've only got one issue. <clears throat> I was fiddling around with... Now this is fine, the screw-on base that you could screw on a block of, of weighted wood or metal. Um, they hold really well. No problem at all. And that's because I have this slight pocket in here to stabilize the key from moving around. But on the strap base... To make it printable, I had to have a, f a mostly flat side. I could avoid supports in the smaller pockets for the magnets using a bridging trick. But I don't have a pocket to hold the key. I was hoping the magnets would be strong enough. But... See how it moves around? And you can still use it, but that annoys me. Okay, I have a solution to this problem with the key moving around on the magnet mount base. And it's real simple. One more part. <laughs> I printed this. This little bracket shim topper. So this can be printed without supports. And it fits over the top of this. And you could uh, secure it with a little dab of super glue at each corner. And then it gives the pocket that stabilizes the key. Don't move around when you use it. Slight shifting right now because this isn't glued, but once it's glued, you have to really push on it to move it. You could totally operate it without it shifting around. So just one additional part, that's all. 
just this little shim. So as I said, I'm much happier with this design, the Pico paddles. Uh, they're a little more flexible, as you saw with the magnets. You can uh, have different bases. You could even design your own bases. I'll have a template in the uh, PDF file that will be included with the uh, files up on Thingiverse and printables. The PDF will also be a parts list um, with QR codes to take you to Amazon to get the parts. Um, and uh, the instructions, well, the assembly instructions we saw here in the video. So I don't have to do a separate video for that. So, as I said before, um, they will be up on Printables and Thingiverse, link in the description below, along with instructions and a part list. And I hope you enjoy them. So there you go. My uh, wrist, leg strappable, base mountable, Pico paddles, 3D printable, minimal hardware, <laughs> version 2. I hope you enjoy that, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.